Columbus Day. Now this is kind of a rhetorical question, but it's one that has to be asked. And so who, who would continue to celebrate this holiday after finding out uh, the truth? So this video is, is, is more about uh, discernment than anything. You know, what, what do I mean by that? So it's not about begging the people who love this holiday to change or it's not about shaming people who love this holiday. I said, you know, do you, if, if you love the holiday, continue to celebrate. But for us, y'all as people, this is about being watchful. Uh, this is about being aware of those who defend this type of stuff and moving wisely among those people. This is about understanding who uh, the enemy actually is and being able to follow the holy rot uh, through this maze of things that we have to fight through. So this uh, writing here is, is pretty graphic. Uh, it comes from a book called The Devastation of, of the Indies uh, by uh, Bartolome de la Casas. He was a priest who accompanied Columbus on his conquest, uh, uh, particularly in this writing of Cuba. And it detailed the abuse and the murder uh, of the native population. So if you have a weak stomach, I give you opportunity to uh, turn, the video, uh, turn the video off and, and go to something else. So I'm just going to read just a little bit of what this priest, this Catholic priest was saying uh, that they did as they uh, conquered uh, Cuba. All right, so uh, it starts off and it says, endless testimonies prove the mild and pacific temperament of the natives. But our work was to exasperate, ravage, kill, mangle, and destroy. So I'm going to stop right there. So he's saying... That, that they have a reputation that everybody knows that these natives have a reputation of being mild tempered. I mean, good people, uh, great disposition. Everybody knows this, but that's not our work. Our work was to exasperate, ravage, kill, mangle and destroy. And then it says, and the Christians talking about themselves with their horses and swords and pikes begin to carry out massacres and strange cruelties against them. They attacked the towns and spared neither the children nor the aged, nor pregnant women, nor women in childbed, not only stabbing them and dismembering them, but cutting them to pieces as if dealing with sheep in the slaughterhouse. These are his words. He said they laid bets, they, they, they laid bets as to who, with one stroke of the sword, could split a man in two, or could cut off his head, or spill out his entrails with a single stroke of the pipe. They took infants from their mother's breast, snatching them by the legs and pitching them head first against the crags, or snatched them by the arms and threw them into the rivers, Roaring with laughter and saying as the babies fell into the water, boil there, you offspring of the devil. Other infants they put to the sword along with their mothers and anyone else who happened to be nearby. They made some low, wide gallows on which the hanged victim's feet almost touched the ground stringing up their victims in lots of 13 in memory of our Redeemer and his 12 apostles, then set burning wood at their feet and thus burned them alive. To others, they attached straw or wrapped their whole bodies in straw, set them afire. With still others, all those they wanted to capture alive, they cut off their hands and hung them around the victim's neck, saying, go now, carry the message, meaning take the news to the Indians who have fled to the mountains. They usually dealt with the chieftains and nobles in the following way. They made a grid of rods, which they placed on fork sticks, then lashed the victims to the grid and lighted a smoldering fire underneath so that little by little, as those captives screamed in despair and torment, 
their souls with them. Now this is uh, some graphic information and we understand uh, with our other information that this type of behavior happened not only in Cuba but all of the rest of the Indies. It happened in Central America, it happened in South America, it happened uh, it, you know, in North America, and all in all, uh, estimates, some estimates, uh, accumulate uh, the South American, the Indies, and, and, and all of this. They estimate at least 200 million people were likely slaughtered uh, during these conquests. That's a lot of people. So, when you, when you see people who, who understand this information who realize what happened and they continue to celebrate. You have to ask yourself, who are you dealing with wisely? It's not about making people change. You can't make people change. It's about understanding who you're dealing with so you can move wisely uh, uh, among those people. There's another note uh, that, you know, I, I want you to, uh, to check out. And, and, you know, he, he said himself, they, they didn't care how old you were. They didn't care about, um, you know, whether you were young. They didn't care. They didn't care. You know, they, they, they had no regard uh, for that. It should take us back to Deuteronomy 2850. So Deuteronomy 2850 said that there was going to be, uh, you know, a group of people at the end. Uh, that we were going to end up falling into captivity to. And he said, and I'll just read Deuteronomy 28 and 49. It said, The Lord shall bring, or Yahuwah shall bring a nation against thee from afar, from the end of the earth, as swift as the eagle flies, a nation whose tongue thou shalt not understand, a nation of fierce countenance. And watch this. He said, Which shall not regard the person of the old, nor show favor to the young. All right? So we're reading this. And this priest himself admits that they could care less. So I'm reading this again. It's saying the Christians with their horses and swords and pikes begin to carry out massacres and strange cruelties against them. They attacked the towns and spared neither the children nor the age nor pregnant women or women in child uh, bed. Not only stabbing them and dismembering them, but cutting them to pieces as if dealing with sheep in the slaughtered house. So, when, when you look at everything, these people carry the same characteristics as what was described in Deuteronomy uh, 28, 49, and 50. It describes, I mean, it's accurately you can describe uh, the, the people who would eventually or have our people in the, in the captivity. And so we have to take those things into consideration. We have to take in the behavior of those people. And we have to be able to assign it wisely, uh, you know, in this day and age, uh, to the people who continue uh, to carry uh, those same characteristics. But anyway, I just wanted to give this to you. Receive it as you can receive it. Apply it as you can apply it. Shalom.